Hello everyone, welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Toys R Us exclusive Astonishing Ant-Man 2-Pack featuring Ant-Man and Stinger. We have here Ant-Man and Stinger in the front window box along with that exclusive logo. We do have a, some artwork here of Stinger and Ant-Man on that side, same thing on that side. On the back we get a pretty cool product shot here of the two together. Something interesting, we get this little note here that uh, these characters are based on uh, art from that comic book. I don't recall ever seeing that before. And then down here we do have the read-up, both powered by Pym Particles and able to shrink to the size of an ant, Scott and Cassie Ling have more in common than a family name. Very cool. And of course on the bottom we do have the UPC code so you can check your local Toys R Us to see if they have it in stock. And enough about that, let's get this open and take a look at these figures. And here is Ant-Man and Stinger outside of the packaging, and uh, yeah, this is a pretty good looking pair here. I like that we get the updated Ant-Man uh, from the Astonishing Wave, and uh, you know, makes me think, I think the last thing I've read uh, anything with Ant-Man in it might have been Secret Empire. I haven't been keeping up with Marvel too much. I uh, don't really know too much about Stinger, so we'll get a better look at her once, uh, once we get our close-ups done. But yeah, really cool to add these two to the collection. Uh, I mentioned that this is a Toys R Us exclusive, which it still is. I did find this at my Toys R Us, even though they're still liquidating. So make sure to hit your stores and check out to see if they got it. Uh, there's no real accessories to speak of other than Stinger's wings, which I know are a little overexposed here. But we're going to get a better look at those wings once we get a better look at the figure. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into our closer looks on Stinger and Ant-Man. And speaking of Stinger, we'll go ahead and start with her. So here we do have our Stinger head sculpt, and this actually came out looking really good. Uh, that paint around the eyes, we don't have any kind of blemishes there as far as even the line work goes. It's very clean. The lips very clean. The uh, mask, there's no overpaint. Uh, you know, everything looks really, really good on this. The little antenna looks like they actually plug in up there. They don't come out, but they are a uh, bendable material, so you do have that. Uh, you don't really have to be too cautious with them. These, I think, are these a little bendable too? Eh, those are a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, that, that face paint came out looking great. The eyes and the line work, just awesome. Uh, back of the head, nothing really special there. Uh, while we're back here, though, we can take a look. So we do have the wings here. And you can see it's this translucent blue, and I'm trying to get you the color. I know I'm a bit, uh, it's difficult on the white background here. It is a very light blue, and it does just plug in. This is the same body that we've seen with the female uh, beetle and wasp character. One difference you'll notice, this has the peg holes where the smaller wings went with those two characters. You don't get those wings with her. You only get the, uh, the larger set, which they are a pretty good size uh, wings just for, for the scale. Looking at the rest of the paintwork here, pretty clean again, except right there. Those shoulder joints, that uh, hinge there, keeping the purple and really just interrupts that silver uh, circle on her shoulder. That is a big downer. Uh, I mean, it won't be obviously as bad if you're kind of maybe posing with her arms up, but that is a bummer in my opinion to have that just really ugly look there. But otherwise, the logo on the chest came out looking good. Clean again there. And then just kind of goes around to the back. Looking at her hands, the silver paint came out nice. I think that's the button that she pushes probably to shrink. I don't know. Maybe. And you get that open hand over here and then the fisted hand. Like I said, there's no extra hands or anything. Another downer, there is a distinct difference in the purple plastic used on the upper thigh there and then as soon as you go into the paint they used a black uh, material here and painted it purple whereas here they have the purple material so there is a very distinct color difference and you can notice all the way around so that is kind of a bummer but otherwise again the line works not bad you get a little bit of bleed through but not too bad and there's really not much going on with the legs I'm glad we don't have high heels um, you know, those are terrible to stand, but yeah, otherwise, I, I think this actually came out looking really good. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ant-Man. And once again here, looking up close at this, this came out really clean again. Uh, the paint detail on the eye, little mismatched there, but very, very faint and uh, definitely not noticeable at a distance. 
Um, on the side, you got the little red dot there painted. I do have a chunk missing over there. I don't know if I did that when taking them out of the package or what, but that's not too big a deal. But otherwise, the metallic on the helmet, you get a little bit of a marbling effect. You can actually see really well right there. So there's metallic effect, and then the face sculpt came out looking good. And an interesting note, this little rubber piece here is it's movable so i almost feel like this might be a reused head and uh and then they just molded a helmet over that head uh, but just like with stinger these are a little bit bendable so you don't have to worry too much about breaking those off uh, going down the rest of the figure uh, we can see that i want to say this is probably the spidey 2099 mold with this collar added on to it because it does feel uh you know it's, it's got the butterfly joints and it's a little bit bulkier looking but again, we get a little bit of overpaint on some of the line work. And it looks like they missed a little paint there on the, the edge. But the red line work, red to black, came out looking pretty good. Elbows, a little bit of bleed through there with the black. Belt came out good. I should mention too, I like this sculpt where it looks like, you know, bunched up material, or bunched up fabric right there. Again, I'll have to double check if that is a uh, Spidey 2099 thing because I don't recall seeing that. But that's really cool that it you know looks like the uniform's tucked in, you know the shirt's tucked in. But belt came out looking okay. Hands, by the way, fisted hands. Uh, again, no other accessories. You don't have any major jarring uh, differences in the paint. You can see a little bit of difference in the red on the inner thigh and then the red on the inner thigh there, but it's not too noticeable. He's got these silver knee pads that came out okay. And just some red spots down there. And red on the back of the calf. So not too much else in the paint detail. But I think that head sculpt definitely came out looking really cool. Um, I really like the helmet. So very neat for sure. And while it is somewhat humorous to be talking about the scale with characters that can change their scale uh, in the actual universe, we'll still take a look at these figures. So we have Stinger there coming in at just over five and a half inches and Ant-Man just about six and a quarter inches. And I also measure, measured Stinger's uh, wingspan and that is almost nine inches wide for her wingspan. So quite the impressive wingspan on her. And checking out the articulation real quick on Stinger. So we do get some head wobble. She can actually bury her chin all the way down and she can look up pretty much all the way up. That's some excellent range there. And of course it does move side to side. Arms can actually go up quite a ways thanks to those hinges. She does have, of course, full rotation as well. No bicep swivel, single jointed elbow, gets you 90 degrees. Hands do have, of course, a rotation, and there is a hinge on both of the wrists. She has a diaphragm joint here, and doesn't really get any crunch. Does get a little bit of back to it, but not really much forward. Her wings do have a hinge here, so you can get uh, various poses with that. And it does, of course, rotate on that hinge as well. No waist rotation because of the diaphragm joint. She does have the ball joints there on the legs, can go apart that far can kick forward about that far, kick backwards, not really very far at all. She has an upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, and she does have an ankle that will go up and down as well as ankle pivot. Looking at Ant-Man here, he does have chin that can go down pretty much buried, look up a decent amount. He doesn't really have a whole lot of head wobble, but of course he does have side to side. Arms, of course, that give full rotation around and can come up quite a ways. He's also got that butterfly joint, so he gets some really far backwards and forward range out of that. He does have a bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, which seems to not get much further than a single jointed elbow. He does have wrist rotation as well as a hinge on the wrist. He does have an ab crunch that gets him down that far, up that far, waist rotation, legs that can come apart that far, kick forward, Pretty far, kick backwards, not too much. Upper thigh cut, double jointed knee that gets all the way back. He does have a boot cut, and then he has ankles that go up and down and has ankle pivot. And here's the astonishing Ant-Man and Stinger standing next to Wasp from the Ultron Wave. 
the Walgreens exclusive comic book Ant-Man that we had previously, and the Ultron Wave Giant Man, which technically is Hank Pym, not Scott Lang. Uh, I do prefer definitely this new one over that old Walgreens one. You have that uh, pizza spidey body that they used before, which was still cool that you had the butterfly joints and some great uh, range of motion on it. But I like this new body mold. I don't know if this is, like I said, the Spider-Man 2099, but it's definitely very similar with the uh, bulkier uh, upper torso and those butterfly joints. Very excited to get that. And just because scale doesn't matter, here is Ant-Man and Stinger trying to get into my sugary drink that I was drinking while making this review. And that about does it for this review today. And uh, yeah, all in all, I think this is a great set to add into uh, any collection because we do get some modern comic book accurate characters that uh, are definitely very popular still in the comic universe for Marvel. So uh, definitely worth picking up. I did get this, like I said, it is a Toys R Us exclusive. I did get this at my Toys R Us. They are still stocking shelves, keep that in mind. Uh, even though the liquidation is going on, you know, a lot of these uh, purchase agreements and things like that were done prior to their liquidation. So make sure you hit up your local Toys R Us. They might have this sitting uh, in stock for you. I think mine had like six when I grabbed this today. So uh, very cool. And one more thing too, I, just about how much I really love this body mold for Ant-Man. Just to point this out, he's not on anything. I got him balancing on one foot in this running pose uh, without having him in a peg hole or anything. Um, just another th reason why I love that body mold as far as just the posability on it. But uh, anyway, guys, did you like this review? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you did like this video, hit that like button. If you got a comment on the video, please leave it down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content coming your way. And as always, I appreciate you watching my videos and have a great day.